Welcome to Two Wheels on this edition of Two Wheels. We're taking the roof of Africa Rally in Lesotho. It all began yesterday with the Round the Houses race, spectacular as ever, and then a time trial which determines the starting positions for today. Clayton Enston on pole position. Let's go back and look at that Round the Houses race which took place yesterday morning. The 34th running of the Roof of Africa race, sponsored by the Lesotho Sun Group of Hotels, and this is downtown Lesotho. Lots of interested bystanders watching these crazy men and their flying machines getting ready for this round the houses race. First race will be for the quads, then the 200 cc's, the 250s and then the opens. Nervous times for these riders, wondering what it's going to be like in the mountains of Lesotho this time around. Will rain stop play? Will rain be affected in the result? <laughs> Always the last word from Daryl Curtis, but down on the start line for the quad race around the houses, Jansky and Camp, Jeff Bush, Danny Tambo, alias to Blanche, Port Elder Villiers and Jacques Trubig on the front row of the grid. They're going to be averaging over 100, yes 100 miles per hour, 160 k's now through the streets of Maseru in Lesotho. Hope the traffic cops aren't standing by. Out front on bike number 100, Dion Belcher is hit the front with that fancy about 800 cc's. Behind him it's uh, Christophe Quinlan, the Frenchman, followed by Jacques Trubig, Clayton Dubussy and Cornel de Villiers. So all the top contenders are right up front, the usual suspects for this quad racing. They take a slightly different route from the bikes this year, but it'll be tough nonetheless. Down to the finish line, and Dion Belcher gets the win on the bench, and he's ahead of Cornel de Villiers and Clayton Duplessis in third place. Yeah, it was nice and fast. I knew uh, I had the advantage over the Bombardiers, take them myself, built the motor. But uh, the race isn't won on the first day. Tomorrow, Cornel and Johan and Jacques and the guys will take over. I'm just coming in for fun. No cars taking part this year, but this guy's looking for the starting grid for his off-road cars. Hmm. Wonder where the car race is. But down on the line, it's the 200cc Enduro Cross and the 125s running alongside them. It looks like Jeffrey Walliter has got the whole shot on the 200cc KTM right behind him. Barry Creel. Creel has hit the front. He looks over his shoulder. Walliter trying to get up the inside there. They're doing about 160 k's now down the straight. Behind them, Brett Carter. And then they fourth past Brian Fenikirk and the first of the 125s right on his tail. That's Connie Mayer on a Yamaha. Fighting out all the way through this field. This is important for the time trials because this will determine the starting positions for the race proper tomorrow. The Sierra Bridge or the Sierra Central. Which way should we go? This is the 250s. They are flying through. Elmer Simmons in the lead. Clay Nelson behind him and Wayne Farmer holding off Brian Tapper for fourth place. 50 bikes in this class. The biggest single class in the roof of Africa. Down towards the finish line. One lap completely. Elmer Simmons goes through. He's got a substantial lead there. Who's going to be second? It is Clay Nelson followed by Wayne Palmer and the Russell Campbell Kawasaki. Whoa! Brian Kappa gets that thing absolutely sideways on the tarmac. The trials are showing he's a man of many talent. Oh, front wheel landing there for one of the riders. Not easy coming onto the tire section, but down at the finish line, Alma Simmons on bike number 251, a substantial lead in the 250 car. Wayne Palmer has got Paul Desmond, and that is for second place, and Brian Kappa goes right up, and he picks up fourth in the 250cc class. Next out, it's the first open class race. Look out for Alfie Cox on that big jump as he flies over. But Carl Lewis got the whole shot on the KTM, followed by Cox, Dreddick, Daryl Curtis comes through as well on the gas gas. They are flying through the streets of the series. That photographer couldn't even follow those bars, guys. Cox down off the lap one. Right behind him, Great Nick is closed up on the Yamaha. The Shimmel Yamaha shows its form around the tire section. That big old force boat putting the power down. We've got a crash there. It looks like Leon Nada Pamba has fallen down on the tire. And uh, he looks okay. Pick that bike up and carry on with the race. But out front, Cox has got problems because Grey Dick has got ahead. Grey Dick half a second here at Cox in the first of the open class races. Second open class race. And this is for the Ulysses and senior guys as well. Rob Anderson is on the ex LP Cox KTM and that thing does about 180 k's per hour down these straight sections. So it's Rocket Rob Anderson comes through in the lead and he's followed by David Field and Ross Guscott comes through. Kevin Tebbett has got a poor start but he's making his way towards the front on the Husqvarna and he knows his way around the houses. Whoa, Kevin Tebbett has got past Anderson on the brakes down at the finish line. Kevin Tebbett back from America and enjoying the roof of Africa.
So that was the one the houses and the time trials yesterday. Kate Wilson then on pole position to move the race, followed closely by Alfie Cox. And let's not forget the Bombardiers in that third class. That's going to be well contested. And the Ulysses with those older guys going through the easy route. Should we call it easy? Well, Wendy, four on the roof of Africa through the kingdom of Lesotho. And my camera crew, Jan Hansa, Ivor Kukran, and Andrew Mulligan will be in the heading of the day. For two days of trials, tribulation, tears, and joy, this is uh, thanks to the Lesotho Air Force for providing that brand new helicopter for our cameraman Andrew Mulligan to track the race through the mountains of Lesotho. And Alfie Cox make it nine wins in this race. Alfie Mulligan. Oh, you know, Dave, it's a common route both days. And I think it's only about, uh, about 80 kilometers or 90 k's that are different on each day. So today I think it's just a day to, to look to see where the course is going. We sort of know the last day, the slide your ass section and all of that. So today I think just to look to see where it is, to try and make a gap for tomorrow. I don't think the race is going to be today. If you can get away today, obviously try, but I think it's going to be just a procession trying to find our way, get to the finish, and the next day is almost the same as today. So hello. Are you on a broader spectrum, over 200 entries? Good, eh? Yeah, they've done something, you know, they've, they've, they've enticed the people into this novice, you know, give each guy a turn, even though he doesn't do the whole course, at least he can be involved in the roof of Africa, say, I've been to Lesotho, I've ridden a bit of it. It's a very good marketing thing they've done, and I mean, you see the entries, right? over 300 entries, I think, it's magnificent for the roof of Africa. The only sad thing is the cars. Uh, I'll say it the cars well, Firstly, yet. I don't miss the cars, because I think they've got too many bloody wheels anyway, but there's another place, come over here, Hazel. Eh? Come and join us. This is Hazel Cox. Okay. Hazel, you must be pretty damn nervous to see your husband heading out into two days of hell. Yeah, I am, but I'm also pretty used to it. I know you ride with your feet and we'll see what happens. It's always going to ride with your head. I'll be good like that. And Kate uh, is just ahead of you on the side of the road. Kate, two days of riding ahead of you, what do you reckon? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's good, but that last year looked good for one day, and this day it was horrible. Nothing to really talk about for a year. So, this year has two long days, nothing to know, so it's fun. Are you nervous? Two days. Two days, no, that's two days. Well, the race goes through tomorrow, so it's a good thing to go back here and be on a thousand times for the winter tomorrow. Exactly 6 a.m. and Clayton Esmond gets away on the Shimwell Yamaha 250 two-stroke. 370 k's live ahead of him through the mountain. Alfie Cox just seconds behind on the big old KTM bike number 500. He's won eight of these races. Can he make it nine? Alma Simmons comes flying through and he is coming back on form of late and has been a major contender in this area before in the mini route. Next away, it is uh, Jade Goodsight on bike number 750 and Graham McLaughlin, who has some local knowledge of this area. And that is Daryl Curtis getting away on the gas gas. A bit of ground to make up, followed by Rion Fenikak, and between them, it's Gray Dick on the 426 Schumel's Yamaha. But out front, Clayton Enslin shows us the speed that he flies through the mountains at. Just take a look at this. The helicopter can't even keep up with these guys. Alfie Cox has got that thing pinned wide open. Tell me, are these men brave or what? Simmons is making ground on Cox. Simmons is following his tracks. Makes life just that little bit easier for him. Darrell Curtis has caught up to McLaughlin and Jade Goodside just ahead of him. So Curtis is already making ground on the gas gas. This terrain suits his riding style ideally. You notice how he's standing on the saddle. So much more nowadays. Watch your fire pass. Bernard Johnson gets away just ahead of Gerald Brace. He's riding at 200. And then Jeffy Wallet on that 200 KTM followed by Bert von Zitzewitz from Germany. Seven international riders taking part in the two wheelers today. And this will be a big experience for those riders. Some encouragement for Robert Kirk. Kirk has gone down in the mud. This is just 100 meters from the start. So things are going to be tough for the riders like Robert Kirk on bike number 53. Paul Hugh Martin goes through another one of our international German riders on a Suzuki DRZ 400. This mighty section has caught out Peter Brocker, another one of our German visitors. He has slipped to the ground. Things are going to be tough for the next couple of days. The quads are up next at 7 o'clock in the morning and they're waiting for their start. For certainly a large foreign contingent taking part in this year's Roof of Africa in the suit of Christoph Kuna, one of the only foreigners riding in the quad class. Christoph? First time in Africa, how are you enjoying it? 
yeah, uh, it's very, very beautiful. I never uh, done this type of race, and uh, I'm learning a lot. So uh, yesterday was very good, easy, and uh, I I had fun. <laughs> so I I hope to be the same tomorrow, tomorrow and today. En français, <laughs> en français euh, qu'est-ce que un message euh, On va voir, euh, on, va essayer, on va découvrir l'Afrique pendant deux jours et puis euh, on verra ça plus tard. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Merci. Nous sommes en train de faire le progrès. Comment vous sentez-vous Il y a un long temps. Ce n'est pas toujours ça qui est le premier, mais je peux trouver le bon endroit. Je pense que je vais trouver le bon endroit pour nous et on est ensemble. Uh, well, this is not the day, it's one of the last, from the seven points of the hour, uh, I was there. Let's go. There's a call about tactics, riding on the quad route, all the seniors, and that's Kevin Tebbett, getting away on the Husqvarna, a nice leisurely pace for Tebbett, followed closely by David Field on a four-stroke KTM, that thing looks fast. Josh Drubik gets away on the big Bombardier, the first of that quad cross, and he's got about 200 k's ahead of him today. Paul Aldevilliers gets away and behind him it is uh, Clayton Duplessis. But Clayton Enslin is out front in the open class with that 250cc Shimwell Yamaha. And this is what lies in store for all of the riders in the roof of Africa. Errol Dalton goes through with that big gas gas at the bottom of the mountain. Ahead of him though, Jade Goodside is putting some time on him. This is Goodside up on the mountain ahead of Rian Fenike. On that 200cc gas gas, Goodside is riding on a KTM bike number 750. Well, Fenike goes through. Then Alma Simmons comes along just ahead of Alfie Cox and the boys are all closing up on one another, following each other's tracks as they go through this mountain section. Ray Dick on 509, the four-stroke, keeping it on the boil, right behind Alfie Cox on the two-stroke KTM. Daryl Curtis, standing up as usual with a power down. Ray McLaughlin, local knowledge, he knows something we don't know, he's heading down that other side of the mountain. McLaughlin obviously knows his way around this part of the world. Franzitsevitz with that Suzuki DR400, he follows the normal trail, he's not following McLaughlin. Larry Creel goes through, he's second in the 200cc class on bike number three, and that Tom Carlson on the Miller Moore KTM bike number 350. That's Brian Capper, the trials expert, having the first time ride in the mountains, he's enjoying life at the moment. Take a look at what lies ahead of these riders. It's not easy on the roof of Africa. River crossings and mountain crossings. First of the quads comes through. It looks like Christophe Kuhnler has got in front. The Frenchman is leading in the quad class. This is a great experience for that rider. Right behind him, it's Jeff Rush and Cornell de Villiers. There's Rush. He's lying third now in that class. And right behind him, Alex Sally on bike number L15. Apparently, he's lying fifth in the class. Through goes Sally with the first of the Raptor Yamahas. Eugene Rousseau goes through and he's in the senior class with a two-stroke KTM, a wave tower camera through on his way. And George Booker also competing in the senior class. Don't forget they're riding on the same course as the quads. And the locals are wondering what's going on. Now this is Dali to Blanche, alias Dali Tambo with that pink helmet. This time around he hasn't got that ponytail on him. Neville Murray goes through on 598, the big KTM. And the first of the refuel stops, Rian Fanikak on the 225, 200cc gas gas, comes in just ahead of Darrell Curtis. All the leaders have closed up on each other. Just behind them there, I see Jay Goodsight, and everybody seems pretty happy at this stage. Hey, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? Uh, beautiful, eh? Yeah? We're riding together, we're trying to find our way. Um, that was not too bad, the river's on deep, so it's going to be fun today. We got lost a bit up there. Can I move around a bit? Is this the first group here? Yes. How many guys got through? About five. Okay, so this is the first, the whole first group? Yes, yes. Okay. McLaughlin keeps tabs on the leaders. Neil van der Ross and the Ulysses class goes through ahead of Brendan Bircher and Hayden Percival. Just behind him, Ross Anderson in the senior class and Sean Gunter on L116. Takes it easy, standing up on his Bombardier quad. 
This is G. Evans and Mike Glover looking for a way across the river crossings overnight. The river has risen, the rain has been falling. They're looking across the river, Evans goes into the deep water. Why has he gone upstream? This is fatal. That bike is going to suck all the water and he'll never get that thing started. Mike Glover, he can't make up his mind. Oh, he's also going into the deep stuff. Literally 20 meters away, there's a proper crossing, guys. Why are they taking this route? Oh, because the cameras are standing there. That is why. David Phil pushes his bike downstream. This is the way to do it. Climb off board, let the suspension rise up. Keep that full stroke motor ticking away and push it through. David Phil then goes 20 minutes downstream and makes it look oh so much easier. Lots of local support for him as he gets through on bike number 70. Tough work, these riders are exhausted. There's just over 100 players to go for them, including Baboon's Pass, waiting for everybody. Mike Glover gets the tank and seat off, cleans up the air for her. George Booker goes through in the senior class. Lucky for him, he's made it through that river without stopping. Evans, he's got his bike back together, he's quite happy. Andrew Clark in the novice class keeps it running. Look at his face, he's exhausted. I want to the I agree. Right out front, we've got healthy clocks flying along on the KTM. Which way, guys? Where do we go from here? Daryl Curtis joins him. Certainly not across that river. We can't seem to pick up the track markings. Well, across the bridge we go. So that is Cox and Curtis first and second. Thomas Simmons comes flying on a 251. But the marshals have decided to show him which way. In fact, it's other riders. This way, Ahmed, don't go across that bridge. He's going to meet some oncoming riders in the Ulysses class coming the other way. This is chaos. The rain has affected the markings. Look at that. Oh, so dangerous. We can't have riders crossing cars in the middle of a race. Clayton Enslin comes down towards the bridge. Which way, guys? Turn right, Clayton. Go down the river and then across. And look out for riders coming the other way. Jade Goodside, who's come back from injury in recent months, standing up on the pegs on bike number 750. Sixth place, Harold Dalton, showing his experience. How many roof of Africans has he done? I'll have to ask him one of these days. Which way, guys? Yes, down, follow the river. And it is chaos down at the main river. Gary Prentice has got stuck with his Raptor. Gary's paid about 200 grand in portage fees across the river to the local Dalita branch. He's not paying anybody. He keeps that Raptor running. Oh, this is hard work. And chaos reigns supreme. Decimating the quad class. Wallata up in the mountains on bike number six. Shows you how tough the roof of Africa really is. Ryan Kappa comes down. Thankfully that river is not flowing so hard, but look out for the green slime because that can catch you up when you slip down across those rocks. And that's Alfie Cox with Clayton Enslin following his tracks. And they're heading down towards Baboon's Pass, waiting to ensnare them over its boulders. Dama Simmons behind them following their tracks as well. And all these leaders are right behind one another. It's anybody's race at this stage in the 34th running of the Roof of Africa. Daryl Curtis flies through Baboon's Pass. 40 Ks of these sort of conditions. Jay Goodside goes through. Alma Simmons on 251. Bouncing off those rocks. Imagine doing this for another 40 Ks. How do the bikes handle it? Ted Nielsen goes through on the Shimrels Yamaha right behind him. Slipping and sliding all the way down. That looks like Ian Fenica on the gas gas. Right up with the leaders in the 200cc class. Bouncing and sliding their way along. Gray Dick goes down on the 426 Yamaha. Keep that thing running, Gray. You don't want to be kickstarting that Yamaha up in the mountains. Very cool, bike number three. Oh, and another crash. Imagine doing this 20 times in one day. Fall down, pick it up, start it, and run all over again. That's Errol Dalton, and he behind Graham McLaughlin and Dirk from Zitzovitz, the German, has caught up. Simmons has got stuck in the river. They're right down near the finish line. Only a few k's to go. And Alma Simmons has fallen over in the river. This has allowed Daryl Curtis and Alfie Cox to pull a lead out front. Jack Nelson comes down to the river. Does he get through? Keep it on the pipe. Simmons picks it up and waves to our camera crew. Not too worry. He knows there's another day to go. Jay Goodside goes down into the river. Is he going to be stuck? He sure is. Through goes Dalton.
Right in, right behind him, Rian Fanica. Great side, unhappy, losing valuable time. Down at the finish line, Peter Luck has got the flag out for Alfie Cox. Alfie Cox is the leader on day one. For the roof of Africa, Luck is looking up who's second in line. Cal Curse flies through, missed the wild man as always. Second on day one of the roof of Africa. So, day one of the Roof of Africa comes to an end. Next week on Two Worlds, we'll bring you the final day of the Roof, but coming up after the break, we'll find out what's happening this weekend with the Toy Run and a three-hour endurance race at the Swap Court Raceway. Welcome back on track with Two Wheels, and the track this time around is the Roof of Africa race in Lesotho. Now, we look back at last week, this is the first day, and Alfie Cox and Gerald Curtis were fighting it out with Alma Simmons chasing him down. So they were the first, second, and third places overnight. The quad class was decimated by overnight rain, and they got stuck in all the rivers. Danny Tablanche was the overnight winner on that Yamaha Raptor. Yeah, well, I hope the weather holds out. You know, yesterday we had a lot of rain, and we're not sure how full the rivers are. That's going to be the big factor, I think. But I think to get over baboons and get over to Slide Your Ass, and then I think the race is going to be on from the end of Slide Your Ass, Malaya Lodge, all the way home. Lucky it's just common from yesterday, so we sort of know where we're going. So it's going to be, I think, a, a, a big deal between Daryl, myself, and Alma. Uh, Alfie hasn't got a chance. He's getting old now. I'm actually quite surprised that he uh, rode as well as he did yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but today's going to be a, a very... Um, a long day, Alma's only two minutes behind us and uh, I'm starting behind Alfie, but it's going to be a tricky day. Um, there's upper boons and there's no rest all the way down to the end of slide your ice, so it's going to be a very tough day today and anything can happen. Yeah, it's difficult to say, it's, it's 400 k's we've got to do, so I don't want to push too hard in the beginning, especially before the passes. Um, the passes are going to make or break us. Um, I think that's where any, anyone can get, get a gap on, on the other. So I think I'm going to save my energy for the passes and uh, Hopefully be in front at the end of them. Elma Simmons then has got two minutes to make up on Alfie Cox and Daryl Curtis on this, the final day. And leading the quad class, Dali to Blanche. Dali, uh, after day well, racing section two, 15 minute gap going into Valais Day. What's the strategy? I'm going to go as fast as I can, but I'm, I'm not going to put some pressure on me. And we'll see how the race develops. But I'm going to try and stay in front. And we'll see how it goes. First rider away in the 200cc class and lying fifth overall, Rian van on the gas gas, putting in a tremendous performance on day one. Dirk van Zitzewitz, our German rider, the first of the international, gets away and he is sixth overall after the overnight. Well, when Gray Dick has come through late to the starting area, apparently he's had a problem with the spark plug and he's missed his start time by over a minute. Not good for Gray Dick on the start of day two. Out on the top of the plateau, Alfie Cox has got Daryl Curtis chasing him down with a gas gas. Don't worry, Curtis hasn't picked up a whole lot of terrain. In fact, that's just the film from his goggles to keep the dust out. And something's gone wrong with those goggles, but Daryl doesn't even know about that because he is chasing Alfie Cox as they head towards the Baboons Pass. Clayton Enslin gets going in fourth place on the Shimwell's Yamaha 250. And starting just one minute behind him, it is Errol Dalton on the 300cc gas gas. Barry Creel goes through in the 200cc class. He's got a lot of work if he wants to catch up to Rian Finikak to win that class. And of course the South African Championship is at stake. Von Zitzewitz goes through, the German rider, a friendly way from him, enjoying the roof of Africa. Gray Dick on the 426 Yamaha after that late start is having to make up a lot of time. And Jeffrey Waller to go through in the 200cc class on KTM number 6. We are into the Baboons Pass. Take a look at these rocks. They've got 40 k's of this uphill and down dale. It is tough, ever so tough. How do you describe the roof of Africa to anybody? Well, this is what it's all about. Alma Simmons has got himself past Alfie Cox and Daryl Curtis, the man with the goggles that are coming apart with his gas gas. In fact, Curtis had a bit of a scare this morning with that bike when he found out that the carb clamp was loose down at the start line. Fortunately, Daryl was able to repair that with his on-bike tools. And this is Clayton Enstlin, currently lying in fourth place, 15 minutes behind the leaders. Ivory, first time on the roof of Africa flying the helicopter. Tell us about uh, your experience so far. Uh, it's quite interesting to be at the roof of Africa. Of Africa. See all those bikes buzzing along below you. <laughs> yes, it's a very interesting and uh, it's quite it's quite uh, an adventure. 
Now my cameraman tells me you're an expert pilot. He says you've done really well so far. Do you want to just tell us about your experience with flying and what sort of uh, plane this is? I started flying in 1998 and because we are flying in the mountains, that's where I got the experience and because uh, always whenever in Lesotho you fly, you, you are able you go into the mountains so that's why I got the, the experience. Of course the helicopter doesn't just take the camera crew around, it also helps with CASI backs. Now Peter Luck, Clark and of course this sort of race must take a lot of organisation. Yes, uh, we try our best uh, to make things run smoothly. Obviously there are a lot of factors which can affect it. Um, as you say there's a lot of people out there and it just takes one link in the chain to cause a disaster. But uh, I think so far everything's gone well. Peter, there's been a lot of concern about water, the rivers, crossings and so on, but obviously that hasn't raised its ugly head as yet. No, so far the weather's holding. Uh, it looks like we may get some storms this afternoon, but uh, let's hold thumbs and hope that it stays like this. Perfect racing conditions. Well done to Peter and his team on a well-organized event. And this is Russell White going through in the senior class on his KTM, currently lying third in that class. He's up and over baboons. Behind him, Eugene Rousseau goes through on bike number 40. It also looks like a KTM. Now we're down at the refueling area. And uh, this is Stefan van Pletsen who's coming in for his refuel. Important that they get back up at this point of the race. All the fuel drums are marked with their numbers on, so each rider knows where is his fuel. Picturesque scenery. Take a look at this. The best part of South Africa has got to be in Lesotho. And Ingo Volschmidt, the man from Namibia, comes in for his fuel. He doesn't look comfortable on that bike. He's dragging his foot along the ground. Perhaps he's got a slight injury that he's carrying. Are you going to retire? Tell me what happened. We had a motocross meeting last weekend in Namibia. And I collided with somebody at the start and I tore my ligaments in my shoulder. And I came here hoping that it's going to work, but not just now in the mud I fell on it and since then I can hardly stand on the bike, I can't hold it properly and I'll never make the boon so I'll retire now and try next year again. Always tough at the roof of Africa. And this is Cornell de Villiers in the quad class and on corrected time it appears that Cornell is now in the lead on his four wheel quad. That's the big old Bombardier Desert Storm. The most popular quad at the moment for this type of racing and uh, Jeff Usch comes through on bike number L13. You can see the mud is making those tyres like slicks as he goes on ever so carefully down this mountain pass. He's been doing this for one and a half days. He's absolutely exhausted. Alfie Cox comes down through the same pass. Now they're on common ground. The open class, the seniors and the quads are taking the same route as they head down out of the boons and they've got the final section to go. Darrell Curtis comes through on the big gas gas. He's lying in second place and look at how he puts the power down. He's not scared of the mud and the downhill passes. Elmo Simmons, he slipped back to third place so the lead is changing all the time. Look at Simmons lock up the brake down the side there. About 200 meter sheer drop over the rocks. These guys are absolutely crazy and they're exhausted on top of it. Jacques Struvig, he's broken down with his bombardier and he's towing another competitor down the mountain pass. Boy, I hope the brakes are working on that one. And look how they are covered in mud. Looks like the man in the moon. Clayton Enslin, fourth place on the Shimwell's Yamaha 250 and he's lying third in that 250cc class. He's not scared of the mountain passes either. These are men of men. They are so fit, it's unbelievable. Hey, and I can drive my Mercedes up the pass if I want. It's my car. I'll do what I like with it. Barry Creel, 200cc class. He's lying in front at the moment because we cannot find the leader. The previous leader, where is Rian Finikirk? Is he out of the race? Creel comes through leading in that class. Tight and pushed him. This is not a backup crew. This is part of the local population. Not guilty? It wasn't me. Out on top of the plateau. Some of the midfield runners are still finding it tough out there. The water is lying all over the place. Rocks lurking under that grass. They've got to be ever so careful. Big KTM four-stroke goes through. 540 cc's electric start. Christoph Lichter, one of our foreign visitors, enjoying the roof of Africa and the mud and guts of it all. That's Glenn MacDonald, also on a four-stroke KTM. It's got to be the most popular bike at the moment for this type of racing. 
And our cameraman, Jan Hartz, is worried about the time bar for these back markers. Are they going to make it through before they close the circuit? Through goes Stefan von Platson on bike number 280. And right behind him, Kevin Dupont flying along on 487. And that's Graham McLaughlin, who's got some sort of local knowledge. He does live quite nearby. Whoa! And we've got a crasher there. That is Jade Goodsight. One of the contenders in the championship. Jade Goodsight has gone down to the KTM. Doesn't even smile for the camera. He's not happy about that one. Goodsight heads back out into the field. Gerald Bass comes through and he's on bike number 98 looking for the trail. Where do we go guys? Whoa, you can see it's mud and wet. It's tough conditions. And that donkey's not even happy. When can I cross this road? And that's Dirk von Zitzewitz, the German rider, looking for the way. Well marked there with those orange and pink markings. Right, it's time to get back in the air and see what's happening to our leaders. Alfie Cox, he's got himself back in front with the 300cc KTM, that is Cox. Back out front with that two-stroke standing on the pegs. <laughs> Daryl Curtis, is he standing on the pegs again? Somehow I doubt it. This is the style of Curtis. He loves to sit down in the saddle and take a handful of that twist grip and hang on for dear life. Looks like he's missed a bit of the trail there, but no problem for Curtis. Just swing it left, go over those rocks and take out another handful. He's winding it up to 130, 140, sometimes they're doing 170 k's an hour through the trail. They've been along this way yesterday, now it's the reverse direction. That's Alfie Cox out front, and Alma Simmons has dropped back a wee bit on the plateau. He's got a lot of time to catch up now. Simmons is winding that KTM, he's got to get back up with the leaders. Yeah, well, Andrew, it's been a tough day today, you know. And, you know, nobody can get away from each other, so it's going to be one hell of a dog fight to the finish. But we have to see what happens. Beautiful. Enjoying today, man. Yeah, I'm having fun. This last section was really hard. We're all over each other, and I think uh, the race home begins right now. And so, you're all together? Yeah, we're all together, but it's. Uh, we're, I think we'll find our way. It's just a case of uh, who's going to be quickest from the last stretch. The guys are really quick at the moment, really going well. Going, yeah, all right, eh? Today was tough. But, uh, Go now, so we're going to have some fun. So that's the final refuel point. Alfie Cox gets away. They are heading for home. Cox, Curtis and Simmons. It's anybody's race for the Roof of Africa 2001. It seems like a lifetime that Daryl Curtis has got to wait before he's allowed out of that starting gate. And he winds it up and he's chasing down Alfie Cox. Much easier to follow through this section because the man out front has got to find his way. And wow, look how slippery it is out there on the rocks. Alfie Cox is slipping and sliding all over the place. He's got to find his way along the trail. Now yesterday they went in the opposite direction, so they have got some tracks to follow and it's the common course for the seniors and Ulysses class as well. Curtis chases after Cox, but it does look like Daryl is getting a little tired hanging onto that seat. Maybe standing up is a better option because you don't get as tired. When you sit down, you get pounded by each and every bump along the way. Cox cleverly around the mud there. Notice how he cuts through that field. Takes a little shortcut there. Alfie Cox knows his way around here. Alma Simmons. He's chasing hard. Alma Simmons has got Cox and Curtis in his sights. That KTM is handing the bumps like nothing else. That is the top three riders at the moment. Cox, Curtis and Simmons. It's as close as that. And there's only 65 k's to go to the finish of this race. Through the mud. Hang on to those pegs. Look at this. It's got to be the closest finish in Roof of Africa history. One of the best supported events that we've seen in its 34 year history. And Alfie Cox, can he make it? Nine wins. He's already won eight of the Roof of Africa's. These are the riders back down further field. They're trying to make their way before the time bar comes through. That's von Zitzewitz, our German rider. Loving the Roof of Africa. In fact, he's been here once before. Wood goes through on the KTM. Standing well over the back of the bike as it finds its way through those rocks. Oh, sideways there for Donnie Janssen van Thuren on his KTM. Look at the water lying around. And that tractor ain't going anywhere. Sometimes it's better to have horsepower. Was that cattle power? I'll make up my minds about that one. Right, the seniors class, Mike Glover has taken the lead in that seniors class, riding for Red Cherry this year, and he's waiting for Glenn Evans, the man who's lying second. They've been riding all day together. Glenn Evans goes through in a friendly way from him. 180 k's are over, and Mike Glover is the winner of the seniors class. Roof of Africa, 2001. Well done to Mike.
Oh, Glenn was chasing me, but he fell back there. Okay. Uh, I suppose 41 year old shouldn't be doing this. We should be taking bowls or something. Hold on. Glenn Evans arrives. Second place in the senior class. He's got to be happy with that. And third place to Russell White on the KTM. Well done to him. The first of the quads gets in. Christoph Kunler. The Frenchman arrives in the lead. But we're waiting for corrected times because we've got to see if Cornell de Villiers has made up enough time to take the overall win. But Kunla has got to be ecstatic with this result. First time ever for him in South Africa. In comes Cornell de Villiers and he has done enough. He's picked up enough time. So on the time difference, Cornell de Villiers is the winner on the Bombardier in the quad class number L4, the winner of the Roof of Africa. Third man comes in, that is Jeff Wush, also Bombardier Mountain. Back out on the track, the open class leader, Alfie Cox. He's leading overall and he's the overall open class leader. Goes through that river section, just 20 k's to go for Cox. He's looking over his shoulder, wondering where are the rest of them. This is Elmer Simmons. He's moving up to second place. Where is Daryl Curtis? He seems to have dropped down. So Simmons now the leader in the 250cc class and second overall. Not scared of that river, he's not scared of those rocks. Simmons really riding well at the moment. Curtis comes through. He has definitely got a little bit tired. It looks like he's battling with the gas gas. Nonetheless, he will be heading for home and hoping to pick up that third place. Cox and Simmons, it's as close as this. The two leaders go through this downhill rocky section, reminiscent of Baboon's Pass. How much closer can it be? And the best place to be right now is in the helicopter watching this lot. Fantastic pictures coming from Andrew Mulligan, our helicopter cameraman. And the crowd are gathering down towards that finishing area to see who's going to win this year's Roof of Africa. Cox is out front, but Simmons perhaps has got the advantage by following Cox. Maybe this is the correct tactic. Peter Luck says, go for it, mate, go for it. Alfie Cox looking for those river crossings. He remembers this from yesterday. He knows that it's a shallow river and he takes a handful as he flies through there. He's wondering how close is Simmons behind at the moment. Looks like Cox has got a bit of a lead there though. Simmons comes around those mini fields. Don't want to ride through those minis and destroy some of the crops. Alma Simmons, 120, 130, 140, 160 k's per hour, top speed. How do you like to be hanging onto those handlebars at this sort of speed? They sometimes accelerate away from our helicopter. We can't even keep up with these guys. Simmons is chasing after Cox. He knows that Cox has got a faster bike. He's on a 300cc machine and uh, Simmons is on a 250. So he knows this section is going to be faster for Cox. Alfie Cox comes down to the finish line. He has made it nine. Roof of Africa wins. This has got to be some sort of record. And his wife Hazel is ecstatic. The KTM team celebrate. Cox has made it nine. Roof of Africa wins. Simmons comes in in second place and third place to Daryl Curtis. Daryl, uh, third overall, second in your class. Tell us about today. Uh, we had a good day today. I mean, um, Alpi and Alma were really flying today. Uh, they didn't put a wheel wrong. And uh, the three of us hooked up this morning and we pretty much rode most of the day together. And it was just, you know, no time to rest. It was go, go, go the whole time. And then we hit the last decontrol. Um, this is basically a 140k race to the end. And after about 40 or 50k's, I think uh, you know, the, the toll of the last two days, you know, I felt really tired. And um, it was either me crashing out of the race or just slowing down a little bit. And uh, I knew Alfie and Alma were stronger than me at the end. So I let them go. And I'm happy to be here. Uh, I think the 300 had a bit more legs than you in the straight stuff near the end. Yeah, definitely. Um, I tried to make it up and the tight stuff and that, um, I knew that was going to happen at the finish, but uh, there's nothing I can really do, you know, my 250 went well. It's great to have a win back at the roof, I haven't, been, I haven't won yet for two years in a row and I, was, I, I began to doubt myself, but uh, I know I can do it still, And but it was a tough race, definitely a tough race. We forget about how difficult the stones are in Lesotho, the big mountains, and uh, I think it's a challenge for anybody to come to this race. Yes, it certainly is. And well done to Alfie Cox, winner in the open class and overall the winner of the 250s, Almas Simmons. The 200 easy class won by Barry Creel in the South African Championship wrapped up. Seniors was taken by Mike Glover, the quads by Cornell de Villiers, a whitewash there for the Bombardiers. And well done to the Roof of Africa organizers. And well